yeah yesterday i had made this file called gmail.java right i simply went to gmail wrote my username and all over here using this commands right now there are other locator strategies as well that is you can identify the objects using id link text name partial link text tag name xpath css selector fine so now let's talk about xpath okay how you can identify the objects using xpath what are xpaths xpath is like the address of an element right for example every house has a house number right anybody can stay in the house right okay similarly every component on the web page has a xpath right technically if i go to gmail right then on a web page everything is known as an object this username is an object this password is an object sign in button is an object okay this link is an object everything is in automation terms you call it an object right every object has a x path okay uh, to actually know what x path is and how what it stands for right and how it looks like you just have to install an add on known as firepath in your browser right you just need to google google out and you need to go to this download firepath option right and you can click over here firepath is add on on fire fire uh, firebug you can click on add to firefox and you'll see the firepath option out here okay so in this firepath option which comes up you will get the xpath of the elements fine in your firepath by default generate absolute xpath would be clicked if you install it freshly now suppose if i go to gmail and if i move my mouse over elements you will get the html page corresponding to that element mm. and in firepath you will get the xpath that is for example for this username field this is the xpath <clears throat> okay i can go here hold on <coughs> sorry go to the project properties java build path and add the jobs right and in this again suppose i make the same example gmail dot java right and i write in here web driver driver equals to new firefox driver right and then driver dot get don't forget to mention the protocol http gmail dot com and uh, driver dot find element by the xpath give the xpath of the element and which is you get it from this form right dot send keys say hello so you can write the xpath as well and if you run this program this xpath will also identify the elements so xpath are of two types okay one is absolute xpath or complete xpath and the other one is known as partial xpath okay hold on let it navigate to gmail and you will see that it is entering the username right so that means with xpath the detection is taking place okay there are two types of xpaths 
one is absolute or we can say complete x path and one is partial x path the x path which we just saw now is a complete x path why because it starts from the base of the html document okay this this x path is made something like this that is it starts traversing the document from the html tag inside the html tag there's a body tag inside the body tag there's a div tag and slowly slowly like it reaches over here the input tag which is the username so this x path is made up of tags that is there's a html tag inside it there's a body tag uh, yeah after that there's a div tag right and then there's a form tag right in the end you get the input tag right. now in between if the developer changes anything okay if he changes one division or if he adds or removes one division then this x path will go for a toss okay this x path will simply go for a toss so we use something known as partial x path we don't use complete or absolute x path until or unless it is very necessary okay generally we use the absolute x path and how do we use the absolute x path um sorry how do we use the partial x path we use the partial x path in firebug uncheck this operation generate absolute x path right and go to the field and you will get something like this okay copy this don't copy the dot okay the dot is not included just copy the x path so this is the x path which you have got now okay and in this x path in the beginning it is written double slash double slash means it's a partial x path star star means any element any element with the id email okay instead of star you can give, give the tag name as well that is input tag right that is the input tag whose id is equal to email right or you can just let it remain like star but this time selenium will find any element with an id email okay so you can instead of writing like this you can write over here driver dot find element by the x path this is the x path dot send keys temp okay so when you run this you see that it works fine but the better practice always is to not write star over here give the tag name right there's an input field with the id email fine so with the help of firebug you can get x paths of any elements for example i get the x path of this button add to firefox okay i get the x path of this element add to firefox and and this is practically the x path right so you can get the x paths from firepath use them in your code and identify the objects right because not every time the object will have an id or something okay so we need to use uh, firepath it will pull out the x path you get the x path and you use it with your code now for example this button over here has got no id so selenium or firebug actually gets the id over here for this division and it traverses down that is there's a division with the id add on that is this is the division inside it there is another division that is this is the division inside it another division then another division this is the division this is the division then there's a para tag p and then there's an anchor tag a so selenium finds the id of this division or firebug finds the id of this division and it starts the x path from this location rather than 
starting it from the base of the document HTML in case of complete XPath. If you are not able to understand, you can ask me any question. You can use the WebEx chat. You can move your mouse on the top. There will be participants tab. And the chat tab, you can use anything to ask question. Right? If you, you, you can mute yourself through participants tab and ask the question as well. Or you can just send me a text message. Right? So, this is what XPath is. How it is made. Okay. No, but the thing is, like if I am working on a project and if I execute this code right fire the box will open up and there will be you see the Firefox with Selenium opens you don't see Firebug installed in that and many times at runtime you need to check the elements you need to investigate the elements and moreover um, this Firefox is completely different you know it's got no bookmarks as the Firefox I have over there it's got bookmarks and also it is different it is very different from the normal Firefox which is installed in my system right so why is this happening this is the first question that is how can I inspect the elements in the Firefox which is opened by Selenium right secondly how do I use in, get XPath in Chrome right suppose uh, this is Chrome and oh, hold on. Okay. in Chrome I am on suppose the Google search page I want to get the XPath of this Google search button. How do I get the XPath for this button in Chrome? In Chrome you can right click on the elements, say inspect element. So in, in element would be highlighted. This is the element. It's a span with the ID Google search. Right click on it and you will get the option copy XPath. You can copy the XPath and simply use it. You will get it. It gives you a partial XPath. This is the XPath. Right? But you have to manually change double quotes to single quote when you are working with Chrome. Right. In I, practically there is no solution. You have to get the XPath from uh, Chrome or Mozilla. Use it in I. Right. There is a way. There is a way to find XPaths in I as well. But that's a very tedious way. It's not supported uh, like normal thing in I. Right, but you know, XPaths they will remain same across all the browsers. If your page source is not changing, if your page source is same, right, then XPaths will remain same across all the browsers. Okay, right. Um, now, we're done. All right. Now coming over to the previous issue that is how do I get my this firebug on the browser which is opened by selenium okay to understand that okay you need to understand the concept of Firefox profiling in selenium or rather not in selenium this is the concept of Firefox okay now Suppose there is your home is there and in that home you are using a PC fine you have your own personal computer but that is being shared by suppose you and your friend okay now when you open Firefox you want that you should see your set of bookmarks right your set of uh, URLs and all everything okay you should see your set of uh, add-ons like I have the add-on called Firebug installed in Mozilla okay and your friend wants that when he or she opens Firefox he or she should be able to see a set of bookmarks a set of add-ons and all everything that means a customizable Firefox for your friend and for you right that is possible Okay, that is possible. That is possible through the concept of Firefox profiling. Right? What you need to do is that, first of all, you need to close Firefox from file exit menu. 
Don't close it from the cross menu on the top right. Okay. Close Firefox from file exit menu. Right. Then go to start run and just type firefox.exe hyphen p profile manager. This is the command. I'll give this command to everybody on chat. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is the command. I'm sorry, I got a very bad throat. Right? So, you click on OK and you will get these two options, default and selenium user. Okay. In your PC, you will only get default selenium user, something which I have created. This is a user profile. Window. Okay. If I create a profile, I can write over here, create a profile called test. Okay. And I click on start Firefox. Then Firefox will start up and it will present you in a mode that it's a completely new Firefox. Okay. This is the profiling concept. That is you can have single Firefox installed on your machine, but you can create multiple profiles and you can use each profile for different work. Right. Each profile will have its own set of bookmarks, own set of settings, own set of everything. Like it's like multiple instances of Firefox right? but each instance with its own set of settings okay now why is this used why is this concept used this concept of profiling is used uh, at many times like suppose you have got HTTPS websites to test then HTTPS websites they use the concept of profiling right same way Salda in Mac also it's the same way. Okay. Then the concept of um, suppose you have to work with proxy server. Right? Many times in companies you have to work with proxy servers. Right? Then you can do the proxy settings from tools, options, advanced network settings and you can put your proxy server whichever you want to use in your office. You can put it in one of the profiles and that profile will always work on proxy. Okay. It, it depends. It depends completely on you and what you want to do. But the concept of profiling is very important. Okay. Now in this profile which I created, this profile is a test profile. Suppose I install Firebug in this profile. I write over here. Firebug download and I just go and hold on. Right, I install Firebug, I restart it. Okay, and my Firefox will be restarted. Right now. I'll see Firebug in this profile test. Okay. In the profile test, I'll be able to see Firebug. Right. Now with Selenium, I need to launch this particular profile. Okay. With Selenium, I need to launch this particular profile. To do that, okay, to do that, you need to understand the concept of constructors in Java. All right. So I'll move to Java. I will tell you about the concept of constructors then I'll come back to selenium and I'll teach you how to launch your desired profile with selenium because when selenium runs Firefox it creates its own profile internally it creates its own profile launches it and destroys the profile once the code is over the execution is over right whenever you run this code if I run this The profile, the browser which will, which Selenium will open would be altogether a new profile. It creates a new profile itself and it simply kills that profile once the execution is over. Right. Now I can instruct Selenium to open the profile which I desire. Right. I created the profile test, right? Okay. To make sure that Selenium is opening that profile, you need to understand constructors in Java. So I'll just, just take up a class, right, and I will 
name that class as say phone fine suppose the properties of the phone are string name int number okay now i create a new class known as test phone with the main function right now in this i create the object of the phone class i write phone p equals to p1 equals to new phone then i can initialize the properties i can write p1 dot name is say nokia p1 dot number is some number right okay similarly i can create another phone object phone p2 equals to new phone p2 dot name is samsung p2 dot number is say some number okay right now every time i create the object i have to initialize it separately okay right now we are lucky that we just have two properties in this class what if there are 100 properties for a phone name number color size weight okay will i be initializing every property separately what if i have to create 20 objects for every 20 of each of the 20 objects will i be initializing each of the 100 properties this will waste a lot of time right okay we are lucky we just have two properties over here so to solve this problem we use the concept of constructors in java right a constructor is something like this public phone public means it can be accessed from anywhere outside this file or inside this file okay what do you do in constructor we initialize the objects now the name of the constructor is same as the name of the class this is a rule okay the name of the constructor would be same as always it will be named as same as name of the class and construction as constructor has got no return type no void no end no string it's simply like this right now this is a default constructor okay inside this default constructor i can write system dot out dot print ln phone default constructor okay now if i go to my test phone dot java and i run this if i run this test phone you will see in output it is printing phone default constructor two times what happens is that whenever i create the object automatically the constructor is called if I write over here new phone as many times I create the object the constructor is called this is how we create the object right where you can just write new phone new phone so I'm writing new phone five times here so five times constructor will be called if I execute this you'll see it calling five times okay All right so you have this phone class and inside it you have a constructor the constructor is always called when you create the object of this class now you write over here a public phone and you write say string n now this is the overloaded form of this constructor this constructor out here it accepts no argument but this constructor takes in one value n and c 
say name number okay this phone constructor takes in two values that is the name and number of the phone and it assigns the global variables these values name equals to nam and number equals to num okay <coughs> i'm sorry right in number okay this i'm sorry for that noise guys these, these are dogs in my place i'm sorry so this phone constructor is overloaded technically this this term is known as overloading that is the name remains the same okay the name remains the same but the input variables they differ okay i cannot have two constructors with the same type of arguments it will throw an error okay but i can have two constructors with different types of arguments this concept is known as overloading in java right similarly you can also overload the functions right i'll tell you right but now i what i can do is whenever i create the object i can create it like this phone p3 equals to new phone and you can give the name of the phone like uh, iphone and some number so on the fly when i create the object i pass on the name of the phone and the number associated with the phone and that phone object would be initialized in the constructor this is what a constructor is i'm sorry now you can write system dot out dot print ln p3 dot name and p3 dot number so it will print the name and number if you run this see that right so i can create the objects like this this looks a more neat way of doing stuff right i can write over here phone p4 equals to new phone right on nokia and some number so on the fly i initialize the object and i create as well as initialize the object right now this constructor is used to create the profile the to open a desired profile in selenium as i told you the concept of firefox profiling that is every firefox will have its own set of settings you can do that through the concept of firefox profiling i just explained you now and i created hold on let me exit firefox from file exit now and i created this profile called test okay and i want to open up this profile when i run selenium okay so to open open it up i'll just make a new class known as selenium firefox profile okay to create that to open up that particular firefox profile you need to create the object of a class known as profiles i9 right called as all profiles equals to new profiles i9 okay and import it now the object of this class this is an internal class in selenium api okay the object of this class represents all the profiles which are there on your current system okay the object of profiles ini class will represent all the profiles which are there in your current system okay you can go into the documentation you can go to seleniumhq.org go to the download section and we will have java doc here okay now these are the java docs right out here what you need to do is
you will have uh, just a minute yeah okay, this is the class profiles and i okay now this class represents all the profiles on the pc right now in my pc there are three profiles and this class has got a function called get profile right so once you create the object you can call the get profile function you can write all profiles dot get me the profile sorry and you pass the profile name test this function it returns is the object of an internal class known as firefox profile okay so you write over here firefox profile p equals to this right so this firefox profile class it represents a particular profile and from all the profiles i get the profile called test now you create the object of firefox driver you write over here web driver driver equals to new firefox driver and you pass over the profile into the constructor of firefox driver so firefox driver has a constructor in which you can pass over the object reference of firefox profile and when selenium opens firefox it will open up automatically that particular profile if i execute this code if i execute this code you'll see that now firebug is the part of the window which selenium is opening you see you have opened up your particular profile with selenium that means right similarly like if i open up the profile from here and suppose i go to google and i bookmark this page i bookmark google.com right and i close this and i execute this code now again that same profile will open up and in the bookmarks you will have google so this is the hold on yeah you see that so this is the concept of firefox profiling now this is this concept is not available in chrome or i it's only there in firefox okay right when in when when is firefox profiling used we'll use it when we'll hand, handle certificate errors firstly secondly we will use the concept of firefox profiling like um it is helpful in uh, suppose you have to work with as i told you proxy servers right you can do the proxy settings in one of the profiles and you can use it with selenium fine and it depends like if you, if you want to do some custom settings in firefox and test the application then you can use this profiling concept okay and especially if you need firebug in the browser in which tests are running because while developing okay while developing suppose there are 10 web pages and the error comes it comes on sixth web page and the script fails okay maybe it's because of your technical error the script is failing so you will obviously need to investigate that page and to investigate that page you have to use uh, firefox profile concept you will have to use a firebug and you will have to investigate the page over there fine so right okay now i told you about gmail a simple example right i told what xpath is okay how you can form your own xpaths you, you can get the get it from firepath right yeah, there are two types of xpaths absolute and partial please try to avoid using absolute experts as much as possible use partial experts right then i told you the concept of five constructors in java a constructor is something which helps you to initialize your objects okay 
and how constructors can be used in creating a Firefox profile. Right? Okay. Now, <coughs> give me two minutes. Yeah. There's a question being asked by Mahit. Is it necessary to create different file in single page example phone? No, you can also do it in the same file. Okay, the question being asked is, do I necessarily create two files, phone.java and test phone.java? No, it's not like that. Okay, you need to just right click, go to new class. I can say, I'll create a class called temp and in that class, I can have the main function as well. I can create the object of temp class within its site, inside it as well. Is it? It's not necessary. Okay, you know, but if you talk about Selenium, in Selenium everything is inbuilt. Okay, you just need to have the right knowledge of using the right classes. Okay, and once you have that, you can simply use those classes and you can um, actually use those classes in your code. You, you don't need to create your own classes and create the objects of those classes. Okay, you just need to learn about the existing classes in Selenium API. Okay, right. Now, little moving a little further. Okay, now I am, I am going to Gmail, I am going to any website. Right, okay. Now, what can be the possible errors when I go to a site and if I try to find an element, click on an element. Okay. Possible things can be the page never loads completely. Okay. Or the element which you are trying to find is not found. Okay. Or the element you are working with is hidden. What do you mean by a hidden element? Okay. Uh, for example, you know, Selenium can interact with those components which are visible to the human eye. Like for example, I write over here dropbox.com. Okay. And after going to Dropbox, I click on the sign in link. Right. So you get the screen to enter email and password. Generally, this email and password is hidden, it is not visible. So, Selenium cannot, will never be able to find the email field without clicking on sign in button. Okay, RC could do that, but WebDriver will not do that. WebDriver cannot interact with hidden, hidden components. So, you have to make the component visible in order to interact with it. Same with the drop down menus. Many times, many sites have got drop down menus, right? If you want to click on a particular element in a drop down menu, you have to move a mouse on that menu. Then you have to click on that element. Okay, so you have to do it that way. You cannot interact with the hidden components directly with Selenium. Okay, now again another thing is element not found. Okay, now element not found, there can be possible reasons. Maybe the page is loaded and the element takes another 5 seconds to load. And you want to wait for that element to load. For 5 seconds. You want Selenium to pull the page and you want Selenium to wait for that element for at least 5 seconds before throwing the error that element is not found. Okay. Now this is handled with the concept of implicit and explicit weights in Selenium. Okay. Implicit and explicit weights. I'll talk about these. Fine. Similarly, the page never loads completely. You can set a page loading timeout in Selenium. Fine. So all of this is achieved with the help of. Uh, hold on. If you go to Java Docs. look at the documentation and all this is achieved with the help of webdriver.timeouts interface okay 
you have something known as implicit wait, page loading, timeout, set script, timeout. So all these things we will be using, fine, and we will be setting up waits. Because you know, many times, for example, an application like Facebook, it's completely Ajax based. There are some components, even after logging in, they take time to load. So you know, we want to wait dynamically for some objects to become visible, right? So you have to wait dynamically. Many times people tend to use this function known as thread dot sleep, say 5000. Now what does this do? Thread dot sleep. Thread dot sleep will practically pause your program execution. It will pause for five seconds. Now suppose if the element is takes three seconds to load, then this thing will make the program stop or pause for 5 seconds, you will act actually waste 2 seconds, it's not dynamic. You want Selenium to work dynamically, fine, if the element is found in the 3rd second, use the element and move forward, right. So we use, that's why we use these things, although this is not bad to use, if you are using it one or two places in the code, it doesn't really make a difference, okay. But if you are using it everywhere, then there's a problem, okay, you have to be very careful. Right. So I need time to explain you all this stuff. Okay, we I'll take that up in the next class. Right. All the time is left, but I'll just stop it.